I'm good. First Enjoying the week. First, I want to thank you for giving your valuable time to me and allowing me to talk with you. Thank you. Thank you for the interview. So, I want to introduce you to my audience. Okay. That can you introduce? Awesome. Can you introduce yourself? Yes, I am Casey Chambers. Uh, I just uh, published my first book, uh, "Do Not Touch Me There." It's a children's book. I am a mom, a stay-at-home um, wife, and mom of two children, and um, who are in virtual school right now. <laughs> and um, that's that's about it. You're from? I'm from Memphis, Memphis, Tennessee. Is Tennessee, so you are a uh, multitasker. Yeah. Awesome. So mom, entrepreneur, and uh, author. So the book name is. Do not touch me there. Okay, it is a kids book. Yes, children's book, right? Can you tell me more about that? Sure. Uh, the book is about uh, teaching children about inappropriate touch. You know, in the middle of this whole Me Too movement um, that is, you know, spreading like, you know, wildfire, uh, I think it's very important that we start talking to our children uh, at a young age and letting them know what is an appropriate touch and who is allowed to give those those kinds of appropriate touches and who's not allowed to give these inappropriate touches. I feel like um, the conversation is a difficult conversation for a lot of parents to have. Therefore, some of them don't have the conversation at all. Um, and I think this book gives them a good um, way to, to, to introduce the topic and kind of open the door for um, the open the door of communication between them and their children, so the children can just ask questions and they can you know answer them instead of trying to explain the whole process from beginning to, to end so you're telling uh, this to the teachers to the teachers yeah do not uh, touch well yeah well the book is the book is for children I would love for it to be in classrooms so teachers can have them I am sending a copy to my children's teachers um, so that they can read these to to the classes, but it, it is a very good teaching tool. So I'm trying to get it into as many hands as possible, uh, so that we can start teaching it at a a very young age. So what is the change that you are expecting uh, uh, with this book? I am expecting it to stop at least. You know, I'm I'm hoping that it it stops at least one case. From happening. Um, since I have written the book, I have had um, grown-ups tell me that they were molested at a young age and that they never even told anyone about their uh, molestation. Um, so I'm hoping with this book that I can help stop at least one, you know, but I'm, hope I'm hoping, of course, that it, it stops more than one. But um, even stopping one would be, you know, make me happy because it's, it's something that, that needs to be stopped. Do you think that it works? I'm sorry? Do you think that uh, your book works? Uh, I do. I do think that it works because I think I've seen um, parents have sent me videos of their children reading the books. And... Um, I can I can tell with them the conversation that they have on screen after reading the book that the children get it. They get that just because you are in my community and you're one of the people that I should uh, respect in the community, it still doesn't give you the right to touch me inappropriately. It doesn't matter if you are my teacher or my coach or my brother or sister, cousin whoever you are, it, just because I, I'm supposed to give you this respect because you're a community leader or uh, or someone that I'm supposed to love in the community, it still doesn't give you the right to violate me with the inappropriate session. I can tell that they get it because there's a, a page in the book 
where it asks, you know, should this person be allowed to touch you? Should this person be allowed to see your body parts? And the children scream out, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> so I can I can tell that they get it. So why you're telling only to the children? Why not adults? Well, I'm hoping that the adults are reading this to the children and they're getting it, too. Um, you know, it, it's funny that you say that because I've, I've been thinking lately that I feel like there are some children style books, you know, the, the picture books that we need to really be writing for grownups to read because some grownups don't want to read lengthy you know, novels, uh, but they might sit down and read a picture book that's telling them, hey, do this, don't do this, you know. So I'm hoping that the grownups that are reading the book and the grownups that hear the children reading the book are getting it, too. I even have um, some um, glow in the dark bracelets that say do not touch me there, too, that I'm sending out with people who buy the books directly from me. And I'm hoping grownups are asking them, hey, what does that mean? Why do you have on that bracelet that says do not touch me there? And I'm hoping these kids are saying back because no one's supposed to touch me there, <laughs> you know. So I'm, I'm hoping they're getting the message through uh, reading to the children and, and hearing the children read it. In my country, I'm from India. In my country, in some religions, I don't want to name the religion, in some religions or in some caste, uh, in some community, uh, you know, uh, in uh, in they they are connected with uh, people and uh, they put uh, their hands uh, on each other without asking the permission. And they they say that uh, that is common in their uh, religion or in their community. But uh, when somebody did the same to me, I said uh, I said the same line that you put for the name of your book. Do not touch me that I said that. So because uh, I don't, I don't, I, you, you are touching me without asking me, without taking the permission of mine. You are, you are just uh, putting your hands and you are feeling comfortable, but I'm not feeling comfortable. That is your, uh, uh, you know, you do for the people who will, who feel comfortable, but don't do that with me. I said that, but they are saying that what is wrong in this? What is wrong? I said, I don't like this. So they said, uh, yes, in some places, in some communities or some, some set of people who named uh, uh, name for their community or for, for their group, they say that uh, it, is, uh, it, is, it is showing love. It is showing love. We are showing love. And you are showing love, but I am not thinking that is the way of expression you can also show your love by using your vocabulary by using your words you can be far from me and you can tell there are a lot of expressing ways to show your love but touching exactly. is not something which you are, you are touching somebody without their permission and i really appreciate you you know you came with a great concert because that is the thing which every human being who is watching this video from anywhere on this planet should understand that without uh, asking or without uh, taking the permission of the person, we don't have right to, or uh, any individual don't have right to uh, touch any individual uh, right. only by saying anything. Anything. It, it can. It, it. If you want to show love, you know, if they are ready, you can do that. But I don't think that is the right way. I feel that. Yeah. Right. Well, good for you. I, I hate that that even happened to you, but good for you for being able to, you know verbalize that at, at a young age, you know, did, did anybody have the conversation with you that, that gave you, where you felt like that gave you the power to be able to speak up in that moment or did it just, was it just, you know, how you felt in the moment that gave you that power? No, they, they just said that uh, this is just, we are showing love. I'm showing you love. This is how I showed you love. I'll just put hand on you. Let's put, uh, this is common in our community and uh, this is common in our uh, set. We, we do this, we do this. So those are, I said, uh, do this with the people who accept this, but uh, uh, there are people who don't accept this and I'm one of those. Good so I said you. the same. <laughs> yeah, I said the same. Do not touch. Uh, do not touch me there. <laughs> I connected with you.
Oh, good for you. Good for you. But yeah, and, and, and that's why I really, you know, I just want to give other kids the power to be able to do what you did, you know, to be able to say, you know, we tell kids all the time. I know I was kind of raised uh, this way, too, is that you can't tell grownups. No, you know, they're your, your elders. You're supposed to respect them. You can't tell them no. And I want these kids to know there are times when you can tell a grown up no. And that's how I even autograph my book. When I autograph my book, I put in there, it's okay to say no. So it is a good message to all the kids. Uh, anybody who reads your book, you know, it is very good message. It's a very good thing. You know, you're telling something which uh, actually makes them to become, to be a good human being. Right. So... What is your next book? Do you have plans to write any other books? Yes. So uh, I have uh, journals that I just, um, they'll be published by next week. Um, I'm, I wrote some journals, uh, one for girls and one for boys. And they're Do Not Touch Me, their journals too, um, to go along with the book. But what what they are is, you know, I was thinking that I'm telling kids how to keep their body safe. I want them to have a safe place to write. So in the journal and how I tied it in with the book is at the beginning of the book, they take a pledge. There's a pledge at the beginning that explains to them um, about inappropriate touch. And there's a safety plan um, after the pledge that tells them what to do if if they are touched inappropriately. What it, What's the action plan behind that? Because a lot of children, once it does happen, they don't know what to do next. So I don't want to set them up to not know what to do next. So there's a, a pledge, a safety plan, and then it's just an everyday journal, um, a 30-day. Uh, it's a little – it might be 33 days, but at least 30 days for them to just journal and write their feelings. Um, it has um, questions for them to answer every day, and then it has free spaces for them to write or just draw whatever they want. Um, and then I have um, – my uh, next book, which will be available for pre-order by the end of the month, it is called Sometimes Grandma and Grandpa Forget. Um, and that book will be available in October. But that book is teaching children about grandparents who are suffering with uh, Alzheimer's or dementia. Um, because I feel like that's also a hard concept to explain to children they don't understand why a grown up is being treated like a child. And I feel like this is a good way to kind of explain to them that, you know, grown ups have memory issues and there's a name for it. You know, instead of even just saying memory issues, it's called Alzheimer's. And this is what Alzheimer's is. And this is why grandma might forget your name. This is why grandma might need us to come over and keep her, you know, because. I remember, you know, my kids asking, because we have uh, people in our family that have Alzheimer's and dementia, why do we need to go keep a grown-up? <laughs> why do we, she's grown, you know, you don't need anybody to keep you, why do we have to keep her? And so I was having to have that conversation with my kids, and I thought, well, there's tons of other people, you know, who are suffering with Alzheimer's and dementia. They have family, they have caregivers, they have grandkids, why not get this message out to them too? So you decided to write books on books for the kids after you becoming mom? I did. Um, I felt like um, there were a lot of books that I was looking for that I couldn't find. And I thought, you know, why not write them? <laughs> and so that's what, what started me on this journey of writing books. Okay. So what is the, what is your inspiration to write them? Books, on, books for the kids. My inspiration is really, it really has been my my own two children. Um, that my children read a lot. They read way more than I ever read when I was little. They, the, between the two of them, one of them always has a book in their hands, and I I think that's a very clever way to get important messages out to them, um, where they don't feel like they're in school you know uh doing school they don't feel like they're learning 
but they really are learning. They're learning in a fun, you know, and engaging way. So uh, they have been my motivation. So what are the concepts that you have uh, in your mind and uh, that you want to put uh, uh, in a book someday? Um, I would like to write about uh, children with learning disabilities. Um, I would like to write about uh, being proud of your skin color. Uh, I would like to write about the whole um, how racism is is wrong on any level. Um, those are just three that I know have been twirling around in the back of my head that I, I definitely want to get out very soon. How many months will you give to yourself as a writer and as a speaker? What was that? How many marks uh, will you give to yourself as a writer and as a speaker? How many months? Marks. Marks. Um, Rate yourself. Um, well, as a writer, uh, I would give myself a... I'm hard on myself, so I would give myself a four out of five. <laughs> because I feel like there's always room for improvement. Um, I, I'm I'm waiting to get more feedback so that I can make sure that I am continuing to get better in delivering my message. Um, as a speaker, um, I've never been uh, a speaker. Uh, so that's something that's totally new to me. So I know there has to be uh, room for improvement there. So if I was to rate myself there, it would probably be a three. <laughs> I've never been. Um, I, I remember taking a public speaking class in college and with my husband in the class. And you talk about bombing a class, a, a speech that that was me. So I'm, I'm hoping I'm better today than I was in that class. But I know um, I want to really improve because I have a lot of messages that I want to get out to children and grown up. Um, and I want the message to be spread, you know, um, dramatically. So I, I want to improve so I can, so I can get this out there. What is the things uh, that you observed in kids and that, uh, should not be there that should be improved or that should be removed from them? In kids? Yeah. In kids in children. I think that children are exposed to a whole lot, a lot more than we were exposed to when we were children. And I think this can be a good thing and a bad thing. I think that um, it's causing us to have to have conversations with them that we no one has to have with us. And because no one had to have the conversations with us, we don't really know how to have the conversation with them. So I think it's important for um, for us as parents to really, like you said, observe our children to see what they're actually doing. So, for example, when it comes to my own children, you know, even with cartoons, I'm not a cartoon person. I, I haven't. I haven't enjoyed watching cartoons since I was younger. And so I don't really watch cartoons today. It's nothing wrong with grown-ups watching cartoons, by the way. It's, it's just not my thing. But I will force myself to sit down and watch their cartoons from time to time just so I can see what's the message. Because I have seen messages that I didn't feel like were appropriate. Even though it's, it's a cartoon that is funny, I didn't, I didn't like the subtle hints behind the message. So I feel like it's important for us to get involved in what they're listening to, what they're watching, so we can be able to give them this parental guidance along the way and even eliminate some of the stuff that we have been allowing them to uh, see or listen to. What are the things that you want to, uh, that you hate in, the, in this world? If I could say one thing that I hate in this world, it's, it's really the, the racism. Um, on any level to any, any person. Um, I just, I don't think, I hate racism. I hate discrimination. I don't, I don't feel like it should, should happen at all to anybody, no matter what.
So if you have power, what you will do? Um, that's a very difficult question. And it is because I don't really know at this point how you fix it. Um, I feel like um, I've never hated anybody. I feel like I've never discriminated against anybody, uh, how they look or how they sound or what they believe in. So it's very difficult for me even to think in my mind, how do you fix a person who's like that? Because I don't know how you get to be that way. I mean, I know it's passed down, but how did your parent get to be that way? How did your grandparent get? To, I, I don't know how I don't know how to fix hate. I don't. So at last, uh, what do you want to say to the people who watches this video from anywhere on this planet? Mm -hmm. um, I would like to say to, to spread love, um, no matter what you have been taught before, to really sit back and reflect and think about how we are all the same, no matter what we look like, no matter what we sound like, um, no matter what we believe in uh, as far as religion. We're all we're all the same. We're all, we're all equal, and we should all be treated with respect. Awesome! I really love this conversation. What was that? I really love this conversation. Oh, thank you, thank you. So, uh, thank you, thank you for giving your valuable time to me and uh, uh, telling me about yourself and about your book about uh, what you feel about different things. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate the, the interview so much. And I just want people to check me out. I am at authorcaseychambers.com. That's A-U-T-H-O-K-A-C-R.com. So can I put this video on my YouTube channel with your permission? Of course, of course. Thank you, thank you so much again. We'll meet, I'll meet uh, soon after launching your book. Okay, thank you so much. Take care. All right, you too. Bye. <laughs> Bye.